Absolutely. Uh, moving on to topic number nine, man, this is a topic, especially around New England and around the country. Big topic right now with everything that's come out of Kyrie's mouth over the last week or two. But then he goes ahead and he stomps on the Celtics logo walking off the court the other night. I, I don't know, man. I've got a couple of different takes on this. But what do you got first, Mikey? Um, he, That was like the douchiest thing that anyone could do. Like, I can't. <laughs> I can't think of a more cowardly uh, snake rat kind of move like that. You see that? And I know producer Ben's got that going. Yeah, Kyrie, you want to be a man? Do that when there's three minutes left to go in the third quarter and everyone's watching you do it, all right? When you do it like that, you leave it all up for interpretation. And I'll tell you what, I've, heard, I've had talks about yep. this with other people. I respect Terrell Owens for doing it in the middle of the game and running into the middle of the star. And he wasn't doing anything disrespectful. He was essentially just sort of looking at the sky. And you know Love what it. happened, Brandon? He paid natural consequences. That's what happens. He got laid out. And you know what he did? He caught seven more passes for 110 yards. What That's how you... Can- that's how you shut people up. That's yep. how you perform as a professional athlete. He is a petulant child. That's what I saw there. This has, and listen, I am not going down the road of whether he's heard racist comments. Listen, it's a cruel, bad world. I'm not denying that. I, I, I'm really not. Sure. That's not. I'm not even talking about that. What I'm talking about is that scummy move right there. And I will say, you know, obviously not necessarily, I didn't expect to hear from Big Baby Davis, but like, you know, you got KG coming out and you got Cedric Maxwell coming out and you got all these Celtics. Hey, by the way, also Robert Parrish, who, by the way, did not have a great relationship with the Celtics after he left, right? He got into some issues. It wasn't really great. Even he came out and said, yo, what are you doing? Like, and and maybe the worst part of this, Brandon, which frustrates me even more is the spineless reporters at the game. Not one, not a single solitary human being asked one question. Why'd you do it, Kyrie? Just one person. Why'd you do that, Kyrie? Why'd you do it? It, I, at, at the end of the game, I'm sure you heard him. It's all respect. I respect. I respect the coach. I respect the players. Do you? Then why did you smear dog crap off your shoe on the middle of Lucky's face? All right. You know why you did it? Because you were butt hurt the night before when the 7,000 people that were there were screaming and yelling at you. And then the night after, kudos to you. You showed up. You dropped 30 something points. You played great. Okay. I just, he is so lucky. I wish that that stadium was full on Friday night just to absolutely lay into this coward, okay? I I will say I respect Kevin Durant a lot more after this, after he came out and said, listen, tensions are high. Not a lot of people like in in Boston. Let's just chill out and play. Like, we get it. We're going to get yelled at. We Like, I respected the heck out of KD for saying that because he gets it. He's a competitor. It's the playoffs, like all that stuff. But don't come in, caveat as like you're going to have racial epithets thrown at you and then stir things up by doing something like that. In my opinion, classless. He's just an absolute child. I I, I can't. I can't. I can't with Kyrie. I just can't. Yeah, man, I'm, I've got a couple of things with Kyrie, man. I totally respect his game. Obviously, one of the best point guards in the game. One of the best players in the game, okay? So I'm not going to deny that. But one of my things was, here's why Boston fans have a beef with you, Kyrie. And, hey, let's go off to why he's calling us and saying there's some racist things in the city. I get it, okay? We're from Boston. There is some racist history in the city. There is, okay? We're not going to deny that. But to the point of it being racist currently, what he's saying, it's not. I think he, he was talking about maybe the history, and we're talking about that's like the 70s, 80s, maybe even going back to the 60s, okay? Boston in 2021 is not what Kyrie threw it out to be for the rest of the world, okay? So there's that first off. And then second off, 
you were here, Kyrie. You were the star of this team. You were the star of the Boston Celtics, and that never came out of your mouth, not once. You never decided to bring that up. You never wanted to talk about racism in the city then. You never wanted to talk about how you were going to change racism in the city then. So shut up about it now, okay, because you're not here to help it. You, you, you want to talk about bringing it up like you're going to help change it? You're not helping changing it, okay? You're trying to make the city look bad for your own outcome and for your own gain, okay? That's BS. And that's what Jalen Brown even came out to say. He said, the way that it was brought up, I don't agree with it because it was brought up in the context of a playoff game and to kind of deflect the uh, attention off of Kyrie even coming back to the city. Kyrie, man, you are a little baby, man, because this is why the Celtics fans don't like you anymore. A couple summers ago, you sat down on that same logo and you said, hey, fans, if you want to have me, I'm coming back. I'm coming back for many a years. I'm going to sign an extension to be here for many of years. And then that next summer, you left and you bounced out and you went to Brooklyn. So shut up, Kyrie. That's why the Boston fans don't like you. They don't like you because you're black, man. That has nothing to do with it. Nothing. nothing. That doesn't, has nothing to do with it. We love plenty of black players around here. I'm a black man saying that. We love Kevin Garnett around here. We love Paul Pierce, okay? We're going to put those two up in the rafters, okay? So don't give me that BS, Kyrie. Why we don't like you is because you lied. You lied through your teeth about how you were going to stay here, how you were going to extend your contract, and then you just walked out the door, okay? I would have rather had Isaiah Thomas stay here than to see you punk us out like that and walk out the back door. And some people are going to comment and say, we're, we're hurt fans, we're hurt Celtics fans. No, man, I'm just speaking the truth right now. I'm literally just speaking the truth. And for you to go ahead and to stomp on the logo with the most history in the league you just look like an idiot. And like you said, didn't do it during the game, which I'm so glad Coach Duart brought it up. Terrell Owens doing it during the game. Producer Ben, if you can bring up that moment, please bring up that moment because that's how a real man does it. That's how a, a actual star in a sport does it. He went right to the 50-yard line, right on the Dallas Cowboys logo, and, and, and posed, right? And posed. And then, like you said, Dallas Cowboy player came out to defend the logo, to defend the team, and, and took a shot on him, took a hit on him. And guess what? Guess what Terrell Owens did? Went out, caught more touches, caught more touchdowns, and he went back to the logo again. And then it almost became a fight and it almost became a brawl. But that was that moment where all of us as sport fans and as athletes respected it, we respected how it went down. We respected not only, there it is, baby. We respected not only how Terrell Owens did it, but we respected how the Cowboys responded to defend their logo, to defend their team, to defend their teammates, okay? Man, I will love this. And this is why we still talk about this moment in history, because Terrell Owens did it the right way. Kyrie, you did it like a coward, man. You did it like a coward at the end of the game where everybody's walking off and barely one camera caught you. But here's the moment where it defended. Boom. That's what would happen to you if you did that live during the game. OK. And hey, if you had tried to do that when Kevin Garnett was playing, when Kevin McHale was playing, when Robert Parrish was playing, when Larry Bird was playing, you would have got smacked up, man. The NBA is is baby cakes now patty cakes compared to what yeah. it was in the 1980s okay so you are part of the diva generation okay so man i'm done with Kyrie. respect his game but as a person mr the earth is flat keep it moving Kyrie. keep it moving clown clown, clown. <laughs> absolute clown i have i have absolutely the only positive say i can uh, uh, yes he might be the best ball handler in nba history but other than that I value someone based on their character, and he doesn't have any. He has no character. And I'll tell you this, Jalen Brown very much could have been the intellectual that pushed him out of town because he realized, I'm a fraud. And everything <laughs> I say, Jalen Brown knows I'm full of cucka. So <laughs> I, I, I actually have an athlete who's cerebral, who's articulate, who's empathetic, who understands, who actually is boots-on-the-ground activist. Jalen Brown's an amazing dude. And yeah, what he, he said, 
what he said, which is so frustrating, what he said was more of a man act than Jason Tatum or Marcus Smart or any of the rest of them. Because you know what, Brandon? This is the issue. This is the AAU issue. I'm boys. We're dapping up at half. Hey, yo, no big deal. We lose. We're still boys. There's no brand loyalty. No one cares about the team that they play for. It is a player's league. So the idea that they care that somebody is disrespecting the hometown or maybe, I don't know, the fans who just blew 600 bucks to go to that game, they don't care about them. They don't care about you. They don't care about me. They don't care about any of them. And I think it's this is just a glaring reminder, and it's really disappointing because you said it, Brandon. Like, the city has made strides, and it's not perfect. But it is absolutely no more racist than any city in our country. And I, 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 you know, I honestly respect your opinion more than than mine in this case. You've lived here. You're a black man. You get it. But part of it too, we have to start thinking about what the real consequences are. And he is just a selfish, selfish dude. But uh, as far as Kyrie, I think you hit it out of the park there, uh, Coach Duar, and and everything you said was correct. And it's just one of those things where I think it was just more even Kyrie deflecting his failures here in Boston because you were you, you were brought here to win a championship and you didn't even come close to doing that, Kyrie. So it's like, keep trying to deflect your failures onto other people. But man, that, that's on you. And, and guess what? You know, stomping on the logo changes nothing. Celtics are still the most successful franchise in NBA history. And they're going to add more titles going forward, and it's it's questionable. You might win one with the Nets this year. I'm hoping that the the Bucks knock you off in, in round two.